Hey, welcome back, guys. Many have hailed Power Book 2's conclusion as one of the greatest endings in series history, and that's a heavy compliment given some of the endings we've been blessed with over the past six years. Though the season is now officially over, there's plenty of unfinished narratives to explore for next season and beyond. In this video, we'll be offering predictions for Ghost Season 2, as well as analysis throughout. Before we begin, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and bell notification to immediately receive these videos. Also, big thank you to all of my channel donors. If you'd like to be the next one, drop a dollar on that cash app for us. Lastly, a spoiler alert is now in effect for all things power. Here we go. The first question on everyone's mind is, when will we possibly get Power Book 2's return? Well, we know that Tommy's series will be filming this month, and Kanan's series drops this summer. Assuming that COVID allows our favorite series to be great, then we could possibly see a return in either late fall or early winter of this year. Book 3 is the next surefire heir, and I think we could get Book 4 after that for late summer or fall. This will lead us right on schedule for Book 2 around the aforementioned late fall, early winter. But we'll see how it goes, and any updates will be provided as the year progresses. Now let's dig into the finale events and possible Season 2 outcomes. The question that comes to mind following the death of Jabari Kelly is this. What will be the fate of his unreleased book? Could the police possibly use it in his murder investigation? I actually posed this question to Justin Marcel McManus, the actor who portrays Jabari on the show, who recently held an Instagram Q&A following the finale. He responded with this. That's a great question. Um, I can't ruin nothing for season two. I can't say nothing, but I will say this. Whoever finds Jabari's computer is going to have a lot of information. All right? A lot. Big salute to the homie for providing this insight because it offers clues to just who could discover his plethora of evidence against our series lead and his associates. The first person that comes to mind is the lovely Caridad Milgram. Now, Carrie works closest to Jabari, their offices literally adjacent to each other. She'll be presumably devastated by his untimely demise, and even more so given that the night he was killed, she was getting them ankles knocked loose in round one and on her way to a second. But in the words of my boy Richie Buzz, it's a cold world. In the episodes leading up to the finale, episode 9 in particular, Carrie proved herself to be intrusive. She coerced Zeke into an uncomfortable position, stressing his importance to come forward with his story regarding the GTG conflict after the club. Her former occupation as a prosecutor also factored into these latter maneuvers. That training will no doubt be implemented as the story progresses. I think Jabari's death inspires Carrie to go against Monet's warning to keep her mouth shut, and she may just lose her job or worse. That brings us to Zeke, the intellectually malnourished phenom certainly has a rough road ahead in his clandestine clapathon with Carrie. All roller coaster rides eventually come to an end, no matter how enjoyable, and him and Carrie's will be no different. In fact, I think it has the potential to cease on uglier terms. Though Courtney Kemp informed us via IG Live that Laz Alonzo most likely won't be a series regular as a result of his obligations to the boys, the tension between Santana and Carrie was undeniable. When she inevitably involves herself in Jabari's murder investigation, she'll come into contact with the charismatic detective, and we all know how that movie will end. Carrie's indiscretions will be equally devastating to an impressionable Zeke, whose state of mind is critical going into the latter portion of his education and NBA draft shortly thereafter. Anything negatively hindering Zeke will bring the fury of God out of an overprotective Monet. Her warning to Carrie wasn't for nothing, and I can see it being paid off somewhere in the middle of Season 2. Let's move on to Tariq, who's in the driver's seat going into Season 2. He was able to free his mother, get her to safety, make things as right as they could be with his Uncle Tommy, and repay Monet for that lapse in Episode 9 prior to the bar shooting. If you remember, he repaired her with the funds he procured from Jabari right before executing him. Additionally, he also came to a truce of sorts with Kane his season-long nemesis whose jealousy cost him his position in the family and nearly his life. Their future exchanges might be ambiguous as a result. Though they did come to terms, Kane's jealous nature will only magnify as Tariq continues to thrive within the Tejada Collective. I'll be further examining these potentialities in my upcoming Part 3 on Kane's fate. Though Tariq seems in the clear, he does still owe 2-Bit 
as that storyline remains incomplete. 2-Bit will certainly come calling for his tribute, but I think Tariq will do him one better. I can see Tariq adding 2-Bit as his hustler consigliere, offering him an opportunity to get money via his connections and train him simultaneously. Also, 2-Bit would be a great asset in terms of muscle for a handless Tariq, so look out for that possibility as well. Monet's murder of Rico could come back on the Tejadas next season, even if just in the form of scarcity. The Tejadas are now in need of a connect to continue their drug enterprise. Lorenzo could very well assist in this endeavor. Although locked down, he's still the family head, and imprisonment provides him with perpetual insight into who's moving what. That'll be interesting as we move ahead. Effie could possibly factor in here too, as she's been shown to be a capable drug mover and her connect has yet to be revealed. If an alliance is formed on this end, it could prove catastrophic for Tariq's lingering romance with Diana. If our series lead remains a part of the Tejada family, Diana would be absolutely his best choice, something I outlined in this video in detail. And while we're on the subject of Tariq's romances, I'll have that Effie video up soon as well. Just gotta say that, cause y'all will never let me forget. The final rung in Tariq's ladder of love is Lauren, who's seemingly on the outs with her pending love interest. We last saw her offending Tariq during a class discussion on race and the prison industrial complex, and then later attempting to accompany Tariq to his mother's trial. The latter maneuver leaves her further from him than ever before, and the deeper he travels into hustler life, the greater that distance will become. That's ultimately beneficial from where this commentator is sitting, because Tariq has only two realistic choices, romantically speaking. Effie being most likely, and Diana being most practical, given his stance and value to her family. Tariq's hustler prowess will be even greater in season two. Each book reference and accompanying experience from season one created space for Tariq to stumble, learn, and grow using nothing but his wits. It's akin to Peter Parker first gaining those amazing abilities and then thriving in that space in subsequent media. The learning curve is over for Tariq, and in season two, the real games are going to begin. But what are your thoughts? What are your predictions for season two? And how will the events of the finale factor into the forthcoming narrative? Be sure to drop me your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. As always, I thank you for watching today's video. If you like today's video, go ahead and drop a dollar on that cash app for us, hit the like button, share it with your friends who are Power Ghost fans, and subscribe for more content such as this. This is Rudy P. Magic of Rudy P. Magic Beats, and have a blessed one until the next one. Peace, y'all.